Hi, I'm Don Sutton of the California Angels. I'm glad you could join us today on NBC's Game of the Week because for me it's an exciting day. I get a shot to try for something that is every pitcher's dream, 300 wins. Wish me well and have a good time watching the game. National Broadcasting Company, now in its sixth decade of bringing you baseball's memories. Baseball's milestones. Baseball's majesty. And baseball's magical moments. Sports proudly presents the Major League Baseball Game of the Week. Today, from Anaheim Stadium, it's the Kansas City Royals versus the California Angels. The Game of the Week is brought to you by your Toyota dealer and the new 4x4 gas turbo truck. Who could ask for anything more? By Miller Lite. For great taste, there is only one light beer. By IBM and its family of personal printers for the finishing touch. And by Nestle's Crunch. Chocolate is scrunches when it crunches. That's why you'll love Nestle's Crunch. Everybody, Vin Scully, along with Joe Garagiola, welcome to Anaheim Stadium as we come on the air a little on horseback. The Angels leading the Royals three to one. We have two out and the base is empty in the top of the second inning. If we have a chance to show you how the scoring occurred in a minute, we will. Otherwise, in the bottom half of the inning. Verbally, we can tell you that in the first inning, Lonnie Smith doubled a left, took third as Law grounded out. And Don Sutton with two out opted to pitch to George Brett and Brett single to center to score Lonnie Smith and that gave the Royals a one to nothing lead. This is Jamie Quirk striking out. That's his second strikeout for Don Sutton and so at the end of an inning and a half the Angels three the Royals one. We told you how the Royals scored in the first inning. In the bottom of the first inning, after Rupert Jones had singled to right, it brought up Wally Joyner. And Joyner hit a curveball as sweet and as far as you can ask over the right field barrier. And that gave the Angels a two to one lead. Then Reggie Jackson walked, and with two out, Rob Wilfon hit a single to center. Willie Wilson had the ball go by him. Jackson scored with Will Fong stopping at third. Schofield struck out and that was it. So it is three to one Angels and Dennis Leonard prepares to pitch to Bob Boone, Gary Pettis and then Rupert Jones. Dennis Leonard with a record of six and five and a great lifetime record against the Angels 14 and two. Three times he has won 20 in his illustrious career. And of course, as big a story as the Don Sutton story is today in his pursuit of 300, so too is the incredibly courageous story of Dennis Leonard. Leonard, who suffered a severe injury the 28th of May in 1983, becomes the biggest comeback story since Tommy John. That's out of play. He was pitching to Cal Ripken in the fourth inning and the knee buckled and down he went. He suffered two operations in 1983, two more operations in 1984. And wouldn't you know, when he came back, he made an incredible start. His first start after that layoff was a three-hit shutout against the Toronto Blue Jays and he beat them one to nothing. Boone losing the bat. 0 oh, 2 the count. We have a moment in case you're going to keep score of what could be a memorable game. Either way, the Angels stack up. Joins all the way through Joyner, Downing, Jackson, DeSensei, Wilfong, Schofield, Boone, and Pettis. Maybe it would be just as good to.
to start with Boone and Pettis and then fill in as each hitter comes up. 0 oh, and 2 the count. Keeps on that breaking ball out there and what he's trying to do is just to stay alive. You can see that Jimmy Quick really shifts out there. Booney, I'm sure you noticed right away, has gotten away from that spread stance that he had where uh, he was almost doing a split there. It was almost painful to watch him take that stance. Uh, he is, it's pretty much a, I would say, a routine kind of looking stance. And he thinks he can get more power that way. He's in an awful slump here in Anaheim. Ball one. For instance, he helped Don Sutton win his 298th game with a home run here. It was the first home run he had hit here in over two years. And he was 0 for 35 when he hit the home run. Well, now he's 3 for 40 at home. One and two to Bob Boone. It is three to one Angels. And we're starting up in the second inning. Shot to the hole. Backhanded by Bianchiano who can't make the play. But he played second base last night. And they moved him over today just to give him the game. He's been playing well. Looked like he was going to make that play. And it kind of hit on the heel of his glove. Watch him try to backhand it. And he never did come up with it, and it's a pretty tough error that they get, but I think that Boone's speed figured into that. Absolutely. So Bianca Lana playing shortstop today, kicks one, and the batter now is Gary Pettis, and it means that the Royals have committed two errors behind Dennis Leonard, and we're only in the second inning. Ground ball at the middle, the shovel for one, back to first, double play. So White, Biancolana, and Balboni come up with a double play, 4-6-3. And Leonard has two out in the second inning. Tell you who made that play was Biancolana. Watch how he guns that ball and puts extra on it right there. You could, he knew who was running. And if he didn't have that fine arm, they don't make the play. And he certainly didn't have any problem because Boone wasn't in the neighborhood, unable to get down there. The ball hit hard enough so he was no threat at all of breaking up the double play. Here's Rupert Jones. He singled a right in the first inning, and then Joyner followed with a home run. Ball one, one and zero. Oh. Dennis Leonard, born in Brooklyn in 1951, against Don Sutton who spent so many years with the Dodgers. A drive to left and deep. Back goes Monty Smith. This one gone. And that's the third home run he's hit this month. The here now is Wally Wonderful, Wally Joyner, Wally World. Strike. He hit that graceful swing that produced the two run home run in the first inning. He had broken an 0 for 18 slump here at home with that home run. As Gene Mock, I said, is it starting to settle down for him? He said, well, he's almost human. Not quite there. But they're also starting to talk not only about his uh, great swing, but his defensive work. He's the only angel to appear in every game this year. Foul ball, all third out of play. Naturally, Joyner is being tested. Gene was saying that the one thing they always do to a good hitter, they throw hard inside to try and make him speed up, try and make him hurry up his swing to go after that heat inside and as soon as they do get him to do that then they start throwing the breaking ball away but so far he has not speeded up with the challenge of the inside fastball I like that one scouting report they said the Yankees have had great success throwing him breaking balls away and fastballs high and in yeah Babe Ruth would hit 210 <laughs> and Ty Cobb would hit 074 if you could pitch him like that Two balls and two strikes to Wally Joyner. Got him. 
So Dennis Leonard has struck out four, but he's given up two home runs, and at the end of two, four to one, California. We'll be back after these messages, please. And he is one in every current Major League Park except Yankee Stadium. He is one in four parks that have been passed out of use. Crosley Field, Forbes Field, Connie Mack Stadium, Jarry Park in Montreal. A drive into deep right field. Back goes Jones to the track at the wall. It's gone. Home run for Biancolano. Uh oh, check his bat and watch the headlines for the lively ball. <laughs> Why don't they just let a guy like Biancolano hit the home run? But I guarantee you somebody's going to say that. So in an early game that has seen Leonard strike out four and give up two home runs, Sutton has struck out two and now gives up a home run to an unlikely hitter. It is four to two Angels and the batter now is Willie Wilson. Wilson's error was of note making. He had gone 163 consecutive games without an error until that ball got by him back in the first inning. On the corner. One and one. Just to sum up his career he's won games in 29 different parks in five different uniforms in 21 different seasons. <laughs> Foul back. Looked like a low pitch. Might have been a breaking ball. And Sutton has heard that sound so many times before and says, well, it's out here. Let's get back to work. I go as far back with Don Sutton, I guess, as just about anybody. That's a pop fly to the left side to Dick Schofield. I would say further than most. Than most. And two things that come to mind about Don, and the first thing was Walter Alston. Walter Alston, when he first saw Don Sutton in spring training of 66, the only reason he saw him, that was the year that Koufax and Drysdale had the joint holdout. Mm -hmm. So because they weren't there, this kid named Don Sutton and another kid named Bill Singer had a chance to pitch in exhibition games. And of course, he impressed enough, Sutton did, to make the club. But Alston said, the one thing I fear about this fellow, he said he's going to throw a lot of long fly balls and a lot of home runs. And that is held up. The other thing, and this is what's surprising to me, that he is still pitching. A high fly ball into deep left field. Back goes Downing, and that one is going to go. So Alston's words are very prophetic. He still throws a lot of long ones. And it is four to three in favor of the Angels. And we're in the third inning. One of the reasons why he felt he would throw a lot of long balls, he doesn't pitch correctly. Now, that's crazy to say. But when he was pitching against Sieber, you saw an absolute textbook pitcher against a pitcher who violates the textbook. Sutton does not follow through if you saw that last pitch at all. He is a recoil pitcher. When he delivers, he keeps a straight back and has a tendency to fall back. Right there. Yeah, instead of following through. And, and Walter Alston spotted that as we look at Lonnie Smith. Alston spotted that immediately. Now, it's funny to talk about a guy yeah. <laughs> who's won 299 games, but it gives you an insight into the perception of a baseball manager. Well, when you talk to Don, uh, I mean, for example, a 300 win, he doesn't necessarily look upon it as a quick trip to Cooperstown. He says, hey, the Nolan Ryans and the Tom Seavers, the flamboyant guys, he said, I'm a mechanic. I, I just work. I tinker. That's hit down the left field line, slicing in the corner, and it's a fair ball. So Rudy Law, who was a teammate of Don Sutton's for a very brief time with the Dodgers, doubles to left and becomes the tying run. And Law is hitting better than 500 lifetime against Sutton. Let's take a look at that motion. And Joe, you look at it and you'll see about that recoil. Obviously, he pushes off well, but he doesn't go all the way through when he throws. He'll come back right there. Yep. See how he comes back? You know, for me, I can't fault that when you look at the bottom line, but exactly. But again, when Walter Alston noticed it, he right. hadn't won a game yet. True, and well, his prediction certainly held up. 
or one to George Brett. He insisted on pitching to Brett in the first inning with a runner in scoring position and two out, and Brett single to drive in a run. Some pitching coach could have gotten him young and probably made him a 200-game winner. Really messed him up is what he would have done. <laughs> There are three men in particular who must have great interest in watching this game. The first man in the Dodger scouting organization who ever saw Don Sutton was Monty Basco. And Monty is just down the road with the Dodgers in San Diego, and I'm sure he's watching. The second man was the scout who actually went in and looked at him and signed him by the name of Leon Hamilton. And the third man is sitting in Molino, Florida, by the name of Charles. Howard Sutton, Don's dad. Mm -hmm. His high school coach is here. Don made a point of it that his dad would be watching the game, and we know he is. You know, when you talk to Sutton about not missing a turn, working hard, staying in shape, he said, my father taught me a lot. He taught me a lot by example. He would get up at 3 in the morning and work on the farm and then go and work on a Florida road construction job and maybe not get home till 6 or 7. And I spent two summers with my dad pouring cement, concrete on the Florida roads, and I knew there was a better way to make a dollar. They're going to walk George Brett this time. He had burned them in the first inning. Brett, who leads the league in walks and intentional walks, last year he was just too shy of Ted Williams' record, and he might very well break it this year. He's walked 50 times, 5-0. That base hit, he got to drive in the run. He had to widen the strike zone. It was certainly not a strike that he hit. He reached out for a ball that uh, down and turned over. It looked like a screwball and drove in uh, Lonnie Smith. And he really had to widen that zone to get that ball. George Jordan, who fouled out in the first inning, he's the DH. Oh, and one to count. It's 4 3 Angels, third inning. A rocky start for each pitcher. And each pitcher has a great story. Don Sutton and Dennis Leonard. idea how the years fly by when Don Sutton broke in in 1966 he wasn't the only new name on the scene in California that was the year that Ronald Reagan got into politics by being elected governor of the state two and one you realize that when he broke in, there was no such thing as free agency, the designated hitter, divisional play, league championship series, or drug clauses. Our weight clauses. He's, he's pitched under uh, five presidents. That tells you something. Incredible. From 1966 to right now. The Astrodome was in its second year, and it had just put in artificial turf. It was the only ballpark that had artificial turf. Line into right field, charging it is Jones. Here comes a time run, Law, and Law will make it to the plate as over to third goes Brett, and it's a 4-4 tie. Order now is hit in seven straight, and under the heading of the best laid plans of mice and men might very well go today's game. The Royals with a half a dozen hits. Gene Mark was saying before the game, and it is certainly a concern as they are on the phone to the pen. Who's to come in? It's a rather beleaguered and belabored angel bullpen. Ground ball to third. One, two, and he's out of the inning. However, Kansas City scores three, and at the end of two and a half, a 4-4 tie. Patricia Luther Sutton, married October 1st, 1968, mother of Darren and Stacy, and a sweetheart of a lady. Don talks about his kids. He says, my son is really cool, but my daughter, she can hardly stand to watch the game. She gets so worked up. There's more pressure on Patty sitting in the stands, I think, than there is with Don because he's been doing it so many times. Meanwhile, he has dissipated a 4-1 to lead, and now downing Jackson and DeSensei try to get him ahead against Dennis Leonard. We can't lose sight of the fact because... 
to me it is such an incredible story the story of Dennis Leonard foul ball oh you can get caught up in Don Sutton and his bid for immortality Dennis Leonard the biggest comeback since Tommy John so seriously injured that now when Pedro Guerrero had the injury in spring training they said yeah that's the Dennis Leonard injury and Vin it would really be remiss not to mention Mickey Cobb the trainer of Kansas City who worked with him daily I mean those silent lonely times when he had to push Dennis Leonard Mickey would be on that bench during the game maybe we'll get a shot of him one and two Ground ball wide of third. Brett comes up with it. Side arms to Balbonia does a toe dance, and they get Downing one away. That was a big league play by George Brett. He really roamed far to his left and was actually off balance. Had to brace himself. Watch how far he goes. Notice the position of his body when he throws. I mean, he was falling towards second base when he threw it. We want to show you Dennis Leonard. This is May 28, 83, pitching to Cal Ripken. Watch. And that injury that occurred in 83 and he didn't come back until April of this year when he shut out Toronto. And now here's Reggie. So naturally we're trying to follow a man in his bid for in a sense immortality 300 wins but we sure don't want to forget Dennis. He's been magnificent. Oh and one to count four four tie in the bottom of the third. As you can see, his average over 300. It has not been below 300 this year, and yet he has never batted over 300 during his career. One and one. He was talking about that, and he was even uh, talking about Balboni. He said, Averages really don't mean that much. It's those last two numbers, the back end numbers, the home runs and the RBIs, and like Balboni with 12 and 31, and, and Reggie, as you pointed out, uh, hitting 300, but he's concerned about home runs and RBIs. One and two. Two and two. He has a little five game hitting streak, but that's not going to mean very much. Four, four tie in the third. Four runs, four hits for the Angels. Four runs, six hits, two errors for Kansas City. And we have had four home runs in the game. Joyner and Jones, Bianca Lana and Smith. Hard, and that's it inside first and down the line. Reggie on his way for two. And the throw from Log. He's in there. second and it looked like he got there a little late and didn't see the play Hauser and from sitting upstairs well it looked like Reggie was out dead to rights but again with only three umpires you can understand the problem take a look at it Belboni kind of flags it I mean uh, he's not exactly a gazelle at first base you got him in the lineup for a bat and Law comes up with a good strong throw and now you call it The only way is if he misses that right leg for the tag. That's the only way. No way. That ball's ahead of him. Yeah, he had to slide right into it. Well, so now a 
one out double by Reggie Jackson to right and the batter is Doug DeSensei in a 4-4 tie and he's going to untie it unless Wilson catches up to that and he does. Throws back to White not in time. Let's take one more look at that play at second base. There's Rudy Law. on the bag yet. Well, anyway, Reggie Jackson's on the bag with two down here in the third inning. That's all that counts, doesn't it? Yes, yeah, I guess so. And Dick Hauser is on a tear. Ooh, is he a little hot? And the batter is Rob Wilfong, who singled in the first inning. You know, you look at Hauser, and you think of all the things that have happened to the New York Yankees. You know, they let Reggie Jackson go, didn't they? Then Goose Gossage got mad and he took a hike, so Rigetti went to the bullpen. They wouldn't let Don Baylor hit against right-hand pitching. Well, the last time I looked, Baylor has hit 12 of his 13 home runs against right-hand pitching. And they let Dick Hauser go. He had won 103 games for the Yankees in 1980. He lost three straight in the playoffs to Kansas City. And Steinbrenner gave him the walking papers, and that's the biggest mistake he ever made. Hauser took his third base coach with him too, Ferraro, the guy that they criticized so much. That's his right. Gene Michael has just left the Yankees. Gene now the new manager of the Chicago Cubs. Hauser won three times his first five years as a manager. Gene Mark has won once in 25 years. He's got a little better needle than you think, too. I mean, he's always a, get the pixie thing and uh, in control. You know the rap on him? He was 0-11 in postseason games. And last year, you remember, fell behind, no games to two to Toronto, turned it around to win 8 of 12, including the World Series. When he looked like he was three outs away from blowing the whole thing. He's quite a guy to have at the range, Dick Hauser. Good manager. Two and two. And that man is Reggie Jackson in dispute. And at the end of three, a four, four time. Don Sutton working on Steve Balboni and a high foul out of play, 0 and 1. Did he ever win the Cy Young Award, Cy Young? Well, when God sneezes, do you say, God bless you? <laughs> Pete Alexander. Hey, there's some great names in that 300 club. 18. Bow back. What's really something, show you what an exclusive club Sutton is trying to join. Not only the 300 victories. Remember, he struck out 3,000 batters. There are only five men who have struck out 3,000 and won 300, and there they are. And a couple of them are still pitching. Necro, Sieber, and Carlin. Two to Balboni. I tell you, in fact, that brings up a point. When Don Sutton broke in in 1966, there was only one everyday player in the major leagues who was over 35 years old, and that was Elston Howard. He was 37, and he was playing on the 10th place Yankees. The old men back then, Willie Mays, Dick Groat, Ernie Banks, and Ken Boyer, were 35 as of the midseason of 66. Well, two players in their 40s. Hoyt Wilhelm was 42, and Atlanta's Chichi Olivo, he was 40. Ah. Boy, have we had changes in the game. Chichi Olivo. Yeah. Ground foul. I let the big guy swing free and out. Hey, that gives me a chance, Vin. In the commissioner's office, we're trying to get a hold of all former Major League players, and he sent out a questionnaire. And if any guys are listening, former Major League, you didn't get a questionnaire, let the commissioner's office know it because they'd like to know we're forming an organization of former players, and, and some guys we can't get a hold of. So let us know where you are. Good. Hot one in. 
inside third and down the line despite the all out effort by Doug DeSensei and Balboni steams into second base with a double. Boy, he does steam. <laughs> he really steams like a Zamboni. DeSensei diving attempt. It was a high pitch. Down he goes. Just couldn't come up with it. Well, I'll tell you one thing that is happening to Sutton. He has given up seven hits. Two singles, three doubles, and two home runs. Now, you have Jamie Quirk hitting eighth and Buddy Biancolana ninth. So Balboni at second and nobody out. 4-4 four, four in the fourth inning. Right. Don Sutton had 58 shutouts. He has had five one-hitters. He's had 10 two hitters. His most recent two hitter was when he beat Seaver in the White Sox for win number 299. Out of the way. Not exactly a Rembrandt, and when I talked to Sutton yesterday, he said he would like for this game, if it was up to him, he'd lock the gates, let the two teams play, and if he did win, make an announcement. By the way, Don Sutton won his 300th game. He didn't like all the hoopla. to the count of Jamie Quirk. Little comebacker. He'll hold Balboni who wouldn't go in anywhere anyway. One down. That'd be worth the price of admission. Balboni in a rundown. Yeah. So one out. Balboni at second. And it'll be Buddy Biancolana coming up. He homered in the third inning. It was the fourth home run in his career. And oddly enough, two of his four home runs have been hit right here in Anaheim. I'll say this, Sutton was very honest. He said if the pitcher went five and two-thirds innings and then came out and you pitched the third of an inning and it rained and they gave you the victory, would you take it? He said, I'd go in my street clothes to get it. You bet. Ball one, one and oh. Interesting, as we said, to point out how it was when Don first started in the big leagues. How about this one? The average major league salary climb from about $15,000 a year to about $400,000. One and one. Did you see in the paper this morning the story that the Kansas City Royals were talking to Bo Jackson and the number tossed around was $5 million for a five-year deal? And all the land west of the Mississippi. And everything that you and Kaufman makes at the laboratories? Can you believe it? Never played a day in a major league. Organized baseball. He's got some great credentials, according to the Kansas City Scouts, though, because I was asking Hauser about Bo Jackson. Foul ball. The scouts rate their players in the Kansas City system uh, two to eight. Two being bad, eight being uh, perfect. Arm, Bo Jackson has a seven rating, which would put him in the Winfield Parker class. Power, seven, put him in the Howard Mantle class. Speed, eight which would put him up there with Ferdinand and the rest. And they only offered him five million? Five million. Shit. Would you take it? A mere pittance. <laughs> two and two. Balboni at second, one out in the fourth inning. A 4-4 four -four tie. It's a struggle for each pitcher. Sutton. Mm. Overhand curveball. Looked like the kind we used to call the drop. You might remember when Sutton left the Dodgers after a free agent. He wanted to go to the Angels right then. It's a strike to Wilson, who has flied out and popped up. If memory serves us correctly, however, he disagreed with the then general manager, Buzzy Bavese, who had formerly been the GM with the Dodgers. And he signed with Houston. In 1981, he got Houston into the miniseries, but he put, couldn't pitch because of a broken kneecap that suffered in Dodger Stadium in the final days when he was around a bun and Jerry Royce hit him with a fastball on the knee and that wiped him out. And then the Astros in 82 traded him to Milwaukee. Foul ball behind. 
trying to play. Booney, a late start, but he's picked it up anyway. So despite a double to open up the inning, they lead Balboni, and at the end of three and a half, a 4-4 tie. Old Hoss Ratburn, 308 wins, but Ben, this guy had some kind of years when he pitched, I'll tell you. Look at that. It's won 60 games and lost 12. That 72 games. Our outfielders don't play that much. He won 60 games. In 1952, the Pittsburgh Pirates that I was on, you know how many games we won? 42 as a team. We won 54 if you count 12 in spring training. He won 60 Six. games. It's like the New York Mets their first year. They won 40 games and lost 120, and their consolation was it could have been worse, but they were rained out of two games. <laughs> Here's Dick Schofield, Bob Boone, and Gary Pettis. 4-4 in the bottom of the fourth. 60 and 12. Oh, and one. Oh, and two. Of course, they bounced the ball, didn't they, in, in those days? It was a totally different game prior to 1900. He probably had a guaranteed contract. Innings pitched. <laughs> Bonus. No balls and two strikes to Schofield. Four runs, seven hits for Kansas City. Four runs, five hits for the Angels. <laughs> one and two. I'm snickering because it was one of the great scenes when you talk about the Mets getting rained out. We had a losing streak at Pittsburgh. We lost like nine in a row, and then we got a rain out, and Fred Haney came in with this big cake. He said, let's have a victory party. <laughs> Only Fred would do that. Two and two. I'd like to remind our viewers we'll be selecting the NBC Miller Lite player of the game at the conclusion of the ball game. 4-4 four, four in the fourth. Dennis Leonard and Don Sutton. changed and Schofield way out in front of it. That is the second time that he has struck him out. A half a dozen strikeouts for Dennis Leonard who has a high of eight strikeouts this year. He really spots it well. Look at that pitch. You talk about low and outside with the breaking ball. There it was right there. You know he's made 12 starts. In five of those games he walked two. In six of those games he walked one. And in one game he didn't walk any. He's incredible. Whoops. You better not think about bunning. And for Boone to think about bunning, that's enough to really send George Brett a message. George hasn't moved in, though. He's still pretty deep at third base. One and all the count to Bob Boone. One out in the fourth inning. Four, four tie. Now back out of play. One and one. You know, another part of the story certainly is Bob Boone. He's catching in game number 1,722. That makes him the number seventh catcher on the all-time list, and he is just behind Ray Shaw. He'll catch him in a little while. Well, that's quite a battery the Angels have today. Don Sutton and Bob Boone. You're not going to scare him to death, hmm? Good breaking. Whoa. One and two. Dennis Leonard trying very calmly to go about his business despite all the dramatics here today. Now, last time I remember he threw the breaking ball outside and Booney fouled a couple off by throwing his bat. There goes the bat, but he got distance on that one. Instead of the bat going up along first base, he pulled his bat. <laughs> Didn't get anything with the ball. Threw his bat farther than he hit the ball. So that's seven strikeouts for Leonard, three consecutively. And Boone strikes out maybe 5% of the time, so that's something to get him. And the same pitch. It'll be interesting if Boone comes up with the game situation, how Leonard works, and because you know that Booney will catalog that. So Boone becomes number seven, and now Gary Pettis checks in. Hit into a double play in the second inning. He batted leadoff last night, and he's batting ninth today. The reason is he strikes out so much. He leads the Angels in strikeouts. That's a bad category for a leadoff man. They want him to bunt the ball, and Brett believes it. He's moved in close to third. At least once a game, he should bunt. 0-1. Oh, That's a strike. 0-2. Oh, 
grass would appear to be very thick. It is. As Brett moves in, naturally with, with an older infield, as they have had here, they would just as soon take some of the sting out of the ground balls. Comebacker. That's that. One, two, three for Dennis Leonard in the four. Then at the end of four, as Patricia Sutton looks on, her husband still trying to win 300. We'll be back after these messages from your local station. The magic number arrived for Tom Seaver at Yankee Stadium on Don Baylor's fly ball to left field. And Seaver won his 300 in front of his family. And among others, Phil Necro, who is still at it. Fly ball to straightaway center field. Gary Pettis is there. talking about Sutton before he was traded to Milwaukee certainly one of the great games he pitched was the showdown game when he beat Jim Palmer to get Milwaukee on their way to their only championship and in the LCS he won game three against the Angels he's been on five World Series teams but his teams have lost all five out hard and then double. Rudy has a slight hamstring pull. Otherwise, I don't know if they would have gotten him on the ground ball in the first inning. He hit it up the middle. It was a good play by Will Fon, but he is slightly under his normal speed. White Sox got rid of him, although he had a great spring, spring training. in the fifth. 4-4 four, four tie. That's his right. Mentioning about Sutton. Five series, no winners. The Dodgers won the series the last year before he joined them in 65 and the first year after he left in 81. But never while he was there. That'll be out of play. a shot at winning the 82 series in the sixth game at St. Louis. But he lost to rookie John Stuper. So that's still another goal for him. He has company down here in pursuit of a world's championship ring. out of play. People like Gene Mark, Gene Autry for that matter, Bobby Gritch, Doug DeSensei, long careers, but never won a World Series. However, Gene also has Mr. October, and Reggie has played on five world champions. Bob Boone helped the Phils to their only world's title in 1980. Three and two to Rudy Law. Sometimes you may wonder when you see a pitcher flick his uh, chest or rub down like Sutton just did. It's a sign they make up with the catcher. It can either be a change of the signals for a particular pitcher or location. The first time I ever saw a pitcher do that was Billy Pierce, who came over to the National League from the Chicago White Sox. Was, did they do it when you played? No. No. Did not do it. It's a good idea because uh, the pitcher's always in control. Just missed with that breaking ball. So Rudy Law is aboard with the walk, and the batter will be George Brett, who received the intentional walk after singling in a run in the first inning. Well, that was a close pitch to take. 3 2. Watch this. Looked like one of those pitches close enough to be a strike. You only take it because uh, you just were fooled by it. Yeah, you can see this look of disgust. Now, with Rudy Law at first. Interestingly enough, in a 4-4 tie, he's averaged almost 44 stolen bases a year. There'd be a couple things. You'd never take anything for granted. I've said that so many times, but a couple things going against him running would be that hamstring you're talking mm -hmm. about, and also the fact that if you got a big hole between first and second when Brett, the left-hand batter up there, pull it through there. 
<laughs> but I don't trust ball players. <laughs> Imagine that Red Sox game with Wade Boggs batting and Lions tried to steal third, so take nothing for granted. Look at those numbers. Talking about a, a man on the move. He went 21 games without hitting a home run, but he has eight now and 32 RBIs. He picked up his 33rd today. And he's hit two in the month of June. Last year, oddly enough, when he hit 30, Brett did not hit a home run at all in the month of June. And there goes Law. Now Law. One and two the count. A 4-4 tie. Boy, did it start off shaky. The Royals got a run in the first inning. Lonnie Smith doubled and Brett singled him in. The Angels had Joyner hit a two-run home run. A single by Will Fong was played into a two-base error, allowing Jackson to score, and it was three to one Angel. Then Rupert Jones hit a home run to make it four to one Angel. But Biancalana and Smith homered. Law doubled and Orta singled him in. And the Royals tied it up. And now here we are in the fifth inning, 4-4. Four, four. Two and two. Brett taking a good look at his third base coach, Mike Ferrara. He just wants to know what's happened as far as Rudy Law is. And Law took a good look in at the bench. So if you're behind the plate, you're saying something's on. Two balls and two strikes. Sutton helping considerably by holding that ball just a little bit longer than usual and faking Rudy Law back, which breaks up everything. The Angels and the Royals, well, they have really put down a, a tough act to follow the last two years. And the Royals are doing really what they've been doing the last two years. City has won the West six times since 1976. In the last two years, Kansas City has come back after the All-Star break. In 84, they were four and a half games behind the Angels at the break and won. Last year, they were seven and a half behind the Angels at the break, and they won by one. See the law flexing that leg, but you still can't believe it. He bluffs. see George Brett chase many balls this bad. I mean, that was overhand in the dirt. You could run for office on this combination. What do you mean? Law and Orta. It's, uh, hello, operator? Excuse me, I thought we were cut off there for a minute, operator. <laughs> Law and Orta. Well, here's George. Fouled out, single to right. And Law holding it first. It's a shame we didn't get our opening on. He had another beauty in there. 4-4 four, four in the fifth inning with two out and a red face. In there. We are talking before about how Rudy Law wears Sutton out. Orta normally does not hurt him, but George got a base hit in the third inning to drive in a run. He does those things that'll help a catcher. And look at Boone checking his dugout now to see if he can get some help on pitch outs, maybe. But Sutton is giving Boone a lot of help by just doing those little things like holding the ball and faking a look over there. Doing what he's doing now, starting a new series of signs. That takes the spring out of that base runner's legs. He's anxious to go. It'll force him not to go, or if anything, break too soon. And they're pitching pitch out just out. in case. Sure. Exploratory. I'm surprised they did after he waited that long. Uh, if they'd have done it immediately after the fake, I would have understood a little bit better. Once again, you see Poon taking a look at that bench. Throws over there not only cut the base runner's lead down as far as second base, but keep in mind, base hit they got a better chance to get him as he tries to go from first to third on the corner you know you're talking about a veteran pitch 
pitcher and all the little things and I got to think of what would qualify him as a veteran. You know how many games he's pitched? 711 counting today. 711. He's learned to do all kinds of things. Yes, out sir. And, and he's learned been kicked well. out twice. He's been kicked out of two games in 711. Both of them in the National League. Hmm. Since Charlie Williams will forever be the answer to the trivia question, who dared to kick out Steve Garvey? You wonder who are the two umpires who kicked Don Sutton out of games? They are Bruce Fremming, Jerry Crawford, Doug Harvey. Doug Harvey, yeah. That surprises me. Yeah. And both times over whether Don was uh, oh, Dr. Doing a little Crawford. doctor job with the ball. Well, he said he never put foreign substance on it. Everything he put on it was made here in America. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> two balls and two strikes. Two out, law at first. Four runs, seven hits, two errors for Kansas City. Four runs, five hits, no errors for California. Don Sutton and Dennis Leonard. Another fake off the road. we're looking at is Mrs. Ed Kirkpatrick and behind uh, is young son Jeff. Ed, a former catcher with the Angels in Kansas City, uh, involved in an automobile accident. We talked to Ed, both Ben and I, before the game and uh, we know he's watching and so Eddie boy, there they are. Your pride and joy watching the game in the sunshine. We go now to the bottom of the fifth inning in this 4-4 tie. Dennis Leonard getting ready to pitch to Rupert Jones, Wally Joyner, and Brian Downing. Jones singled to right and came home on Joyner's home run. And then in the second inning, Rupert Homer. Two for two. Balboni and White, Biancalana and Brett, Smith, Wilson, and Law in the outfield, and Jamie Quirk behind the plate. He hit that home run, Vin, in the opposite field, and yet they're sure giving him a lot of room in left center field. They're still playing him the pull, and he drilled one to the opposite field. Look at that space he's got in there. Yeah, Wilson way over in the right center. Oh, and one to Rupert. One ball, one strike. Show him the fastball. The infield is very deep. And Brett way wide of the bag as you can see so if Rupert decides to go from home run to bunt single he certainly has a shot at it. One and two. Both strikes coming on that good curveball. This to me is the part of baseball I just love. Now he's got him crippled. He, he's spotting that curveball so well. Will he throw the fastball and show it to him and then come back with the curveball or will he go get him right now. I would play and I'd show him a fastball and then come back on 2-2. Two -two. Let's see what happens. Got him. Right at him on that curveball. It's just a cat and mouse game that you play all the time and it goes on on the bench. It goes on on the field. And certainly you can do it at home. That's eight strikeouts for Dennis Leonard. Tomorrow the excitement of World Cup soccer continues on NBC Sports. The telecast gets underway at 1.30 p.m. with a pregame show reviews and previews of World Cup action then on to Azteca Stadium in Mexico City for live coverage of a second round match featuring the host country Mexico versus Bulgaria and the humor show will follow that on Sports World Wally Joyner homered and struck out one for two a four four tie in the fifth inning change fouled off it would appear at least in looking at the boxes each pitcher has settled down after a raggedy couple of innings. Dennis Leonard has retired the last six in a row, striking out four of the six. And Don Sutton has allowed one hit in the last couple of innings. The big out for Sutton was when he got Frank White to hit into a double play back in the third. So we're 4-4, four, four, bottom of the fifth. with 19 home runs 
and a shot foul. Willie Mays hit 20 home runs in his rookie year. Henry Aaron hit 13. McCovey and Mantle 13. Now this kid has really moved on, hasn't he? Wow. Oh, he needs such a breath of fresh air. I mean, uh, great story I read of him and his wife. He's just, just one of raise the kids, be with them. Wally, Wally, and he strokes it into right center to answer their chant. He's going to test Willie Wilson, who was sound asleep. Slows up here, realizes Wilson's going to get the ball, and he says, I can beat him to second base, and he does. I'm surprised he didn't slide. He almost got hurt. He's going in there standing up, but he just did that on his own. He stole the base on Wilson, so now with one out, a tie-breaking run at second, and Brian Downing, and Willie has already committed an error, so you know the professional pride is very much at stake out there. Here's Downing, struck out and grounded out. He grounded out on a good play by George Brett. 4-4 in the fifth. Ball one. You know, that's the thing that Pete Rose did in his entire career that I think was overlooked was the fact he said, I didn't steal many bases, but I used to steal on the outfielders. He used to do that a lot. Oh, and it's so embarrassing because there's no way that's a double. One ball and no strikes. key for the names here today and what's going on. Off speed, so he missed with two breaking balls and the change, and he's in a hole three and oh. Downing hit a home run last night. He's had a sore ankle of late and also a sore wrist, but he's a muscle man on the ball club. You saw him walk out of that batter's box and give old Moose a lot of time if he wants to give him the hit sign on his 3-0 pitch. Seven home runs, 32 RBIs. It was not a fastball either. Dennis Leonard walked Reggie Jackson in the first inning. It's his only walk up to here. You know he's going to be around the plate. He has struck out eight to equal his high for the year. They'll put all that together, and we'll see now if Downing is ripping three and one. If it's close, he'll get himself a cut. Joiner at second. One out, 4-4 four, four in the fifth. Fastball missed. Well, that's the second walk allowed, and here comes Reggie, and the place really comes alive. first with the breaking ball, then with the change, then with the 
fastball, he's given you everything in the store. And when he misses on that particular pitch, and I only say that because now Jackson is in great shape to zero in, not only on a particular pitch, but in a particular zone. I mean, two balls and no strikes, he can say, I want a fastball low, I want a fastball low inside. If it's anything but that, take it. Steve Barr down in the shadows, heating up back of him. 4-4 in the fifth inning. strikes you know Reggie's taking a good long look and you just have to go to the back and he's got the hit sign here and he can zero in on two and all just multiply that on three and all he can really set his sights and he's swinging into right center field and it's going to be a rolling catch no no catch and the runners move up and a run will score and our saying I came up with the ball I showed you the ball and you can see Hauser even going through it almost like he's playing the game charades there's a hand up he showed it to you two lights is four a few days ago when Charlie Williams threw Steve Garvey out in the game in San Diego on a play that evidently showed that Garvey was arguing on the right the next day when the umpires gathered at home plate, Steve Boros, the manager of San Diego, brought up a videotape to the plate and was thrown out of the game. Hauser might bring up a library today. <laughs> Willie Wilson will help him carry that library up there. And Dennis Leonard is just walking away, and he can't believe what he just heard. And look at Wilson. You know, we were talking about his pride before. It's been hurt. The error, and then the fact they stole a base on him, and Wilson gave it every possible chance to catch it and felt he did catch it and now he feels that's been taken away from him it's a shame that they are minus the fourth umpire because that has really complicated matters here today Dennis Leonard is just trying to figure this thing out to hey well nothing much I can do I'm I know one thing I'm losing by a run now five four well, give Jackson a single and a run batted in and it's carried home by Joyner and this is what it looked like what he has it in the glove rolls over held it up he thought still in the glove now he dropped it and that's when the umpire said it's in play take another look well your honor what do you think I say catch me too he dropped it while in the act of throwing I think that Dick Hauser should feel that way. I think Dick is going to take the fifth and anything else that's handy. Six pack. Never mind. Look at this. He's that, got it. That ball is be, the glove is between the ball and the ground, and Willie just couldn't believe it. There's Doug DeSensei with two on, one out, a run in, five to four in favor of the Angels. Breaking ball strike. You know, that'll get the headlines, but let's not lose sight of the fact that Leonard had worked to count to 3-0 and and got behind, and Jackson was hitting 3-0, and so he kind of painted himself into a corner. And I still go back to Joyner taking the extra base. That might have unsettled Leonard and changed his pitching to downing, and one thing led to another. Sutton is leading again 5-4 in the fifth inning in the pursuit 
of number 300. Downing at second, Jackson at first, one out, fifth inning. with a good fastball. One and two. At first base, Reggie Jackson. At second, Brian Downing. Joiner home to score to break the 4-4 tie. that you call it was just a case of uh, Balboni being very alert at first base and he got in behind Jackson who's kind of giving him the needle now because I'll tell you that was very very close you know I'm glad it wasn't any closer than that really one more time showing the absence of another umpire really points up a basic flaw in the game well they always have reserves I mean it seems to me like there were six and eight ten umpires on the field when I was playing <laughs> nine strikeouts for Leonard here's Rob Wilfong Ball one. Wouldn't you know, the missing tooth always has to be right in the front of your smile. That's what's happening here. Jackson at first, Downing at second, and you can see where the first base umpire, Dale Ford, is. Two-thirds, almost three-quarters of the way to second base. But Dennis Leonard, a season-high nine strikeouts, and he's done it in less than five innings. In there. You stop to think of it, though. Uh, we've kind of gotten spoiled with umpires. You remember when there were only three working oh, all sure. the time? Yep. And they said one at every base. That's just too much. It's not enough to do. And, of course, in the league championship and in the World Series, you put them down the foul lines as well. And you have alternates. One ball, one strike. Two and one. Where's Richie Phillips when you need him? I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> Richie Phillips heads the union of the umpires. We should be hearing from him pretty soon. <laughs> Two and one to count to Rob Wilfong. Leonard once struck out 13 Angels, but that was nine years ago. He's got nine so far today. Now back. Two and two. But that's a remarkable note on his endurance and his toughness, both physically and of spirit, that he has come back in such great style. His strikeout pitch has been the breaking ball, that hard curveball, hard slider inside to left-hand batter, outside, the outside part to play the right-hand batter. Two and two to Wilfong. Check swing foul off to the left. Still two and two. What a game. Kansas City led 1-0. The Angels led 4-1. Kansas City tied it up 4-4. The Angels now lead 5-4 on a disputed play in center field. And all the while, Dennis Leonard battling Don Sutton, who's trying to win his 300. Otherwise, we don't have anything going on here today. 2-2. Two two. Just missed it. That was the one he wanted right there. When Jimmy Quirk behind the plate, the way he moves indicates fastball, curveball, and he has to be careful, and he certainly has been doing that, not to move too soon to tip it off. That's a big edge, too. Leonard did not want to go three and two, because with two out, Downing and Jackson will be going. Downing's had a sore ankle, so it's a slight edge for the Angels to have him in motion. Three and two, two out to Rob Wilfong. The runners go. And the breaking ball got him looking. Strikeout number 10. He strikes out the side for the second time today. And at the end of five, it's 5-4 five, Angels. Here's another edition of Characters of the Game. Hey, Tug McGraw, what's the best joke you've ever heard? Uh, <laughs> I can't answer that. <laughs> 
hog. There's nothing to be embarrassed about. You were never that shy. You're the guy who coined the slogan, you gotta believe. That was back in 73. Remember how you led the Mets to the pennant that year? And then a few years later, you were wearing a Phillies uniform. That was 1980. And you saved the last game, and the Phillies were world champs. But, Tug, despite all the victories, you know what you're always going to be best remembered for, and that's those offbeat comments and those pranks and jokes. So come on, Tug, tell us the best joke you ever heard. I'll tell you the biggest joke of all is me being in the game for 20 years. <laughs> Under the heading of so near and yet so far, put the name Willie Wilson. He's a bit upset, I would, I would say. say. And again, it's one of those things you understand the situation. There's only three umpires instead of four, but it is really driving the Kansas City Royals up a wall. It's tough on the umpires. They have to move into different positions. They're really not used to it. They've all done it before, and they'll do it again. But I don't know. Why, well, why couldn't they have had a replacement here? Oh, there's the question. A bunt in the air foul and lands untouched as Frank White tries to get the Royals started. He'll be followed by Steve Balboni and then Jamie Quirk. White flied to left and he had a key at bat in the third inning. With one out, runners at first and third and Sutton apparently on the ropes. White hit into a double play. On the corner, strike two. Sutton, center stage in Anaheim in pursuit of 300. Oh, and two. Got him. That's a half a dozen strikeouts for Sutton and three in a row. What a show we're having here. Leonard has struck out 10. And now look at Sutton get his sixth and third straight. Bring him up, as the players say. They have really settled down, and Leonard's strikeout of Will Fong, 3-2 bases loading the breaking ball, that's the difference between the good pitcher and the great pitcher. Balboni hits a high pop fly. Out goes Schofield. In comes Downing, and it's Downing. That was not an easy play because it's a very high sky, not a cloud up there, and that's one of those that you just don't look forward to. Friends, this telecast presented by authority of Major League Baseball may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form without the express written consent of Major League Baseball. Brian Downing, out there in left field, has played two full years now without committing an error, and he hasn't had one this year. So that's quite a glove behind Sutton in left field. Jamie Quirk has struck out, hit back to the box. He's 0 for 2. There's a, a fly, maybe the dreaded infield fly around home plate. Boy, that'll get you kicked out of a game, you know that? <laughs> infield fly. Jamie Quirk was born in nearby Whittier. George Brett is from El Segundo, where he was a high school teammate of Scotty McGregor. There's a lot of kids coming home when they come here. Now back. One and one. For the Angels, part of the drama today, Sutton is leading five to four, is their bullpen. It is not what Gene Mark wanted because of injury. Little pop fly, the shades are down for Wilfong. So an easy inning for Don Sutton. Then the second time today he's retired the side in order, and it's 5 4 Angel. Dennis Leonard tuning up. And uh, in the split screen, you see Mickey Cobb, one of my favorite trainers uh, for obvious reasons, certainly not overdressed like a lot of people who wear hair in the daytime. <laughs> but Mickey's a great guy, and that's the guy that really Dennis Leonard gives a lot of credit to, who just stayed with him and helped him and pushed him and cajoled him. In fact, when Dennis won the first game in the comeback trail, he gave the game ball to Mickey Cobb. Angels leading five to four. 
And it'll be Dick Schofield, Bob Boone, and Gary Pettis. Schofield has struck out twice in the first and in the fourth. And that's something he rarely does. In fact, he's only struck out, including today, 19 times all year. One ball and no strikes. Foul ball down the right field line, feeling well out of play in the count one and one. Among many things that you like about Leonard is his, his ability to pitch in and out. He just moves that ball around. He doesn't just stay in one zone. He, in fastball, out with the breaking ball. Foul tip one and two. It's remarkable, really, but in his comeback, Dennis Leonard has been the Royals' best pitcher. Brett Saberhagen went five starts without a win. He's already lost as many as he lost all last year. Six. A drive into left center field and deep. Back goes Wilson and Smith. Wilson calling and makes the catch. So Schofield, long out, one down. Bob Boone will be coming out. He's gone nine innings twice, has Leonard as a footnote to that. In fact, he went nine innings, allowed only three hits in a 17-inning game against the Chicago White Sox and didn't get a decision. That's hit foul, 0-1. In Leonard's five losses, Kansas City has scored a total of only seven runs. I mean, you want to talk about someone who's been brilliant. His earned run average was two. Leonard GRA going in is a little more than two and a half, and he is certainly responding to the challenge after a very rocky first two innings. The paid attendance, 40,005, plus three umpires. <laughs> Bob Boone, who was a 20th round draft pick of Philadelphia. And what a career he's had. Ball two. Two and one to count. Booney followed by Gary Pettis, then Rupert Jones. One out, bottom of the sixth inning about the importance of the Angel bullpen relative to Don Sutton and his attempt at winning his 300th today. In there. The two pitchers upon whom Mark would rely would be Doug Corbett and Terry Forster. That's it. He really doesn't want to have to use anybody else. And he would love to see Sutton go all the way, but Sutton has only one complete game. Foul ball out of play. So when we get into the seventh and the eighth and the things get a little tougher, a considerable part of the story will not just be Sutton, but whether somebody can ride perhaps to his rescue or suffer the embarrassment, the indignity of letting one get away. There's going to be a lot of pressure here soon. Hey, he's starting to feel it now. You saw him check the, the lineup card. The team mock post and then have the Kansas City lineup on and he wants to know who he'll be facing next. Three and two. And that's a fly ball to shallow left. Here comes Lonnie Smith. He's there. Let's see if we can duck in a couple of scores. The Yankees beat Baltimore four to two. Cincinnati finally won a one run game. They had lost five straight and I think four of the five were by one so they won two to one. Milwaukee beat Boston two nothing. The Mets knock off Pittsburgh 5-1. Minnesota over Cleveland 9-3. Boy, what a crowd they had last night at Cleveland. And St. Louis beat Chicago. Welcome to the club, Gene Michael. Mm. Cardinals still not able to score a lot of runs. Here's Gary Pettis hit into a double play and hit back to the box. I'm going to miss Jim Fry and Don Zimmer. Oh, I'll tell you that. Me boy. too. I, I just hope they get jobs in baseball, and I'm sure they will because they're just great to be around. Ground.
ball to the right side to Frank White. Interestingly, Leonard has struck out everybody but the guys you'd expect him to strike out, Reggie Jackson and Gary Pettis. And at the end of six, five, four Angels, we'll be back after these messages from your local station. Great moment in the life of Gaylord Perry, pitching for Seattle against the Yankees' Willie Randolph. Ground ball. Play at first, and Gaylord has won his 300. We'll see about Don Sutton in the seventh inning. Sutton pitching to Bianca Lana, Wilson, and Smith. And we told you that from now on, seventh inning on, the bullpen will bear a big burden. Ground ball to the right side. Will Fon, one away. Down in the bullpen, in the corner, Terry Forster is beginning to loosen up. Donnie Moore, Gary Lucas, Stu Clyburn, they've all been hurt. And the two men who could be involved, there's one of them, Terry Forster, and the other's Doug Corbett. Sutton now has retired 10 of the last 11. Since Balboni doubled, the only other man to get aboard was Rudy Law, who walked in the fifth inning. So he is inching slowly up the mountain now. And he's got one out in the seventh inning. And a steaming hot Willie Wilson. 0 for 3 and had a rough day in the field. Committed an error, which he rarely, if ever, does. Was a little lax on a base hit. And Joyner took a base on him. And then, of course, he felt he made the diving catch. And the umpires overruled him. Wilson comes Lonnie Smith in there. And he's walked the time run aboard. That breaks a little string. He had retired six in a row, ten of eleven. A walk to Wilson puts a rabbit out there, and that equals Don's high in walks, and that's more distressful for Gene Mark. Three walks. Well, it's a matter of time. You saw uh, pitching coach Latchman on the phone find out about that bullpen. It's a matter of time when Willie Wilson's going to go. Booney looking for help on pitch outs. Uh, Booney very tough on his base runners. We got a little battle going on here. Lonnie Smith, the batter, and they pitch out, ball one. To give you an idea of the, of the approach down here, on the angel note sheet, it said, just in case the impossible occurs, the last time Sutton pitched back-to-back -back complete games was 1982. So that's the feeling going into this game. And Wilson bluffs, and the pitch hit him. Lonnie Smith hit by the pitch. And now you have Law and Brett with one out in the seventh inning, 5-4 Angels. Looked like a fastball. He's trying to move him back of the, uh, from the plate, and it just keeps going right in. You can see hit him on the elbow. And so now it's base runners at first and second, and deep trouble. Mark deep in thought. He already alerted Forster. And here come the string of left-hand hitters, Law, Brett, and Orta. Sutton's a good fielding pitcher, so it'll, have, it'll take a pretty good punt to move him over. Rudy Law grounded out on a close play, doubled and walked, one for two. Ball one. Doesn't want to lose Brett. Tells you something. Brett, the on deck hitter. One out in the seventh inning, five to four Angels and Sutton. Ball two. So now he's struggling, just as Dennis Leonard struggled in the fifth inning. And looming is Brett, and here comes Gene Moore. It was also the first time you saw Sutton really come storming off the mound, kind of walking around there. And there are little things that pitchers do to tell you that they're heading for trouble, taking too much time between pitches, uh, going for the rosin bag, checking the defense. He's going to make a oh, right away. Quick hook. That's it. Quick hook. Well, I realize 
that Sutton is disappointed. However, he can still win it. He could have nothing to do with it, or he could lose it. And there's a precedent. If you remember Steve Carlton's 300, he had to have help, and he got it from Al Holland. And it's interesting, too, that two ex-Dodgers are involved in this, as Terry Forster will try and save it for Don Sutton, who will now get a standing ovation. And we'll be back. Don Sutton has said goodbye to the game, but not to his dream. Not yet and not today. It'll be up to Terry Forster to try and salvage it for him. He went six and a third inning, so he can win it. He can lose it. He can have nothing to do with it. Terry Forster, the hoss, as they call him, pitching to Rudy Law with a 2-0 and oh count. Strike. Well, he had a feeling the bull was going to experience the pressure and from here on in it will. could even lose the game with Smith at third his responsibility representing a tiebreaker and Brett at the plate trying to pick him up one out right Smith at third law at first in a 5-5 tie fouled away this one under the heading of the best laid plans of mice and men. Don Sutton's pursuit of 300 on a Saturday afternoon in Anaheim. Little number up along first base coming to the plate and the play there. George Orta with Law at second and Brett at first and Joyner who had a two run home run in the first inning who doubled and scored a go ahead run in the fifth now cuts off a go ahead run for Kansas City. Smith must have thought that the play was not going to be at the plate to watch it like that because he was running. Ball one. Now of course although it would be very very small consolation. Forster would love to get the out and at least Sutton couldn't lose the game. That would be the the real indignity of the afternoon for him. 
2-0 to George Orta. Sutton went six and a third, gave up seven hits, five earned runs, six strikeouts, and two walks. Make it three walks. Number back to Forster, and the crowd heaves a sigh of relief that at least thwarted in his dream today, Sutton cannot lose. Here's another edition of the seventh inning stretch. Don Sutton didn't get it today, but no doubt he'll have several chances and will make it. But look at the list of impressive pitchers who never made it. That's incredible, that list. Oh. I bet you, you you could make those barroom bets and, and you'd win every one saying you think any one of those guys won 300 games. I would have said yes to all of them. Yeah, the only one, well, Bob Feller, the war. Nah, but still, yeah. man, he's in big years. Oh, and huh? Well, we're almost back to square one, but we're without Don Sutton. But the other part of the story, we told you that we didn't want to get swallowed up with Sutton because this fella has turned in quite a gutsy job, Dennis Leonard. And he's even, after being down four to one, he was even four four, now five five. And Dennis will be pitching to Rupert Jones, Wally Joyner, and Brian Downing. Jones leading off today has singled, homered, and struck out. Ball one. Gene Mark, in maneuvering his lineup through the early going of the year, has used six different leadoff men. He'll use the whole club if he has to. Breaking ball strike, one and one. Leonard, remember, has struck out ten. This is his finest hour. Fastball, one and two. That's the thing. Here we are in the middle of June. So Sutton didn't get it today, but he's got half a year to do it. Inevitable. That's why Roger Maris's record is such a great one. He had he had time limit on his his record. One and two. Two and two. Or did it hit him? Check the shoe polish. He's saying, "Look at my foot." Here we go again. Richie Garcia says it didn't hit you. I 
just saying it depends on what Garcia would say as to whether it would inflame him or not. And evidently, Rich said something, and then Hauser finally spent all of the house's money, and he got into his wallet, and he's gone. Ah, uh, Garcia, he faded him right onto the pad, and then he launched him. that they were questioning. Does it hit him? Now, he doesn't call it immediately. Now, look at Garcia. Now, watch. He Rupert still Jones. hasn't said a oh, word. He's going to check the ball. And Rupert Jones is then says to him, it hit my foot. And then it started. That delay is what did it. And then, after being allowed a room for error, Hauser finally crossed the line after Rich Garcia. And it was probably in trying to guess. Hauser probably got Garcia's explanation for the delay, and that's what inflamed him and sent him out. Well, well, Gary Blaylock out there now, and that might be enough. Oh, there goes Dennis Leonard, and is he hot? Garcia. There's the battle cry. I may be fertilizer, but you're more fertilizer than me. You're more fertilizer. And this is not a pause that will refresh. But he just has to burn off a little more nervous energy. We got a wild one here. It is 5-5 in the seventh inning. Dick Hauser has been kicked out. Dennis Leonard has been lifted. And left-hander Bud Black comes out of the bullpen to pick up the pieces. And at first base, we've got a meeting as Frank White went over there. He wanted to check Rupert Jones' shoes. They're just kind of visiting over there. And Rupert was showing him. There was a World Series game that involved Nippy Jones. Jones. Augie Donatelli was the umpire. You got it. Well, there's Bud Black, three and three with two saves, former starting pitcher. Gil Hodges was involved in one, too, when he went up to home plate managing the Mets. And I'm trying to think who that was. The only thing is, do they put red shoe polish on those shoes? I mean, that's not a black shoe that they wear. They're no, red. You have to put something on it to keep them clean. Yeah. Well, anyway, he's at first. The joint's gone wild, and it's Joyner, Downing, and Jackson coming up in the seventh inning. Joyner, a two-run home run, struck out, and legged a double on Willie Wilson in the fifth inning. And he got him! Oh, you talk about Tempest in a teacup! <laughs> After all of that, Rupert Jones is nipped by Bud Black. He was going to look at him lean. Whoops, and now there goes the shoestrings, and it wasn't even close. So for De Dennis Leonard, that's a big play. He now has nothing to do with the game. Black is on his own, pitching to Joyner. A strike. Leonard went six innings, allowed seven hits, ten strikeouts, five runs, four earned. So the starting pitchers are out of it. Sutton and Leonard. 5-5 five, five in the seventh in the dirt. Now, if this were in Kansas City, everybody would holler that it hit his shoe. <laughs> right? I mean, is sure. that human nature? Sure. Fouled away. One and two. home run 
runs for the kid. Two and two. One out in the seventh. Five, five tie. A wild one in Anaheim. Still two and two. He really hangs tough against left-handers. Rookie and all that, but he just, to me, looks the same. Well, you know, he hit that home run today against Dennis Leonard, but prior to that, his last three home runs have been against left-handers. Two and two. Ground ball to the hole. White to plug it up and get him, and Balboni was going one way and the throw went the other. You talk about a big man trying to do a little split over there. Once Big Steve sets himself, the building's not going to move. Two out. Take a look at this. Grass loaded up. Now, instead of shifting over that way, he just reaches. Now, with two down, the batter is Brian Downing. So it's Bud Black and Terry Forster, although Forster is being backed up in the Angel bullpen. There is no action for the moment in the Royal pen. Downing has struck out, walked, and robbed of a hit on a good play by George Brett in the third inning. And Brett is playing him on the line, as is Balboni here in the seventh. Check swing. They're going to check swing, says Dale Ford. He's had a bad wrist. You see him shaking it off. In fact, he was a little bit doubtful when he checked the swing. Thought he hurt his wrist. But this guy, you and I both know, man, he's a real bulldog. Well, on one to count. Doug Corbett is backing up Terry Forster in the Angel pen. On one. It's a great story you were talking about before. He, he told his foot to... Yeah. <laughs> they said to him, I thought you hurt your ankle. He said, I told it it was okay. <laughs> one ball, one strike. Ball two. Two and one. He treats those injuries right out of the Vince Lombardi school. It's not cold. It's not frostbite. He sounds more like a hockey player. Yeah, they must be the toughest of all. Five, five in the seven. Two out, bases empty, and it's in the hands of the relief pitchers, Bud Black and Terry Forster, as both Don Sutton and Dennis Leonard are gone and not involved in the decision. Two and one. Chain, and he missed with it. Ball three. Jackson in the fifth inning who hit the fly ball into right center when Willie Wilson did or did not catch the ball. The Angels got a run when the umpires ruled he did not catch it. That's one of several plays to finally drive Hauser over the edge. A play at second base on Jackson's double. Hauser thought he was out. The fly ball that Wilson did or did not catch, and then the ball that did or did not hit Rupert Jones. It was ruled it did. And finally, Hauser too much to bear, and he was gone. Hit to left field. Coming up is Lonnie Smith. So they're going to lead Downing, but boy, that hit batsman by Rupert Jones sure changed the atmosphere. And at the end of seven, a 5-5 tie. Second baseman. Next Saturday's game of the week, the Yankees travel north to play the American League Eastern Division champion Toronto Blue Jays. Some will see the surprising Red Sox hosting the Baltimore Orioles. The action gets underway at 1 with Major League Baseball and Inside Look. Check your local listings for game in your area. 
Got a note from John Monahan, the Angels press man, uh, the press department. He heard from Marty Springstead, who's head of the All, Amer All the American League umpires. And uh, Marty first wanted to know why I was getting all over the umpires. Uh, well, I just thought he made the catch, Marty, and I'm not really getting on him. Just tell him where I see him. And uh, wondering why they don't have any umpires to bring in. Well, there's a good reason for that. Seven umpires are injured on top of the vacationing ones and one, Reed, which we said had to go uh, to his wife since she had uh, major surgery. That way can understand. And I'm glad that the umpires are getting vacations. Sorry seven are injured. And I still think Willie Wilson caught that ball. <laughs> let up, or Nope. Doug Corbett is pitching to Frank White, a busted bat, a shattered bat, and a pop fly to Wally Joyner. One away. So with one down, Steve Balboni coming up. Here's Corbett's numbers. In 1980 and 1981, he appeared in more major league games than any other pitcher, and it took its toll. So Terry Forrester came in and bailed out Sutton. And now it's Corbett and Black battling for the decision. Hit it on the hands, popped it up, and it'll be DeSensei. has struck out, hit back to the box, and popped up. 0 for 3. I just saw Marty, too, in New York, and he's going to send me an umpire's cap and everything for fellas in a hospital. Yeah. Nah, he probably won't send me the cap. Oh, he will. Don't he's a worry. good guy. Yeah, he's just giving you some information. Seven were injured, and that's all. <laughs> he wasn't trying. He's a nice person. He is. I like Marty. And he wasn't trying to hurt you. <laughs> uh, wait till Giamatti gets in the National League, boy. Oh, yeah. Huh? Oh. 5-5, oh. five, five, two out in the eighth. You wouldn't. Wouldn't what? You wouldn't greet the new president of the National League next year and say, hey, Goomba. No, 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 no. You wouldn't do that. And I wish Augie Donatelli would quit thinking about making a comeback. One and one to Jamie Quirk. Fouled off. One and two. The Angels and the Royals. They usually kick up a lot of dust. Last year, the Royals beat the Angels nine of 13 times. This is only the third meeting. They split the previous two. They really roll around, and they're doing it today. Foul ball. Last year, California went into Kansas City, leading by one for a four-game series, if you remember. The Angels lost three of the four, scoring only two runs in the three losses. And Kansas City took off. And Mark doesn't want to go through that again, but right now, he and Dick Hauser want their ball clubs to get away from the 500 mark. Fouled away. Bobby Valentine's Texas Rangers putting a lot of heat on the American League West. They have some great young players over there. Young arms on that pitching staff. And I tell you, Bobby Valentine has really done a job over there. Uh -huh. Two out on the eighth. Five-five tie. In the bottom of the eighth, to Sensei, Wilfong, and Schofield do up for the Angels. So down goes Jamie Quirk. Strikeout number one for Corbett. And at the end of seven and a half, the Angels five and the Royals five. Well, a 
has been a wildly exciting afternoon, and when you think about it, it's like doing a Christmas play with only two wise men instead of three. <laughs> it has really been some afternoon. We've had it all, but that's the great thing about this game, oh, and the unpredictability of it. You can build it up all you want, but you just never know. And by the way, amidst all the noise and confusion here in Anaheim, from all of us at NBC Sports, a happy Father's Day indeed to all of you, wherever you may be. And we're lucky enough that we're going to be home with our yes, family. Yes, indeed. Dr. Sensei will start it off. His young son is usually here, taking in the action. Doug has struck out, fly to center, struck out again. the frustration of Wilson. He thinks he's got it. He times it. He really got up there. He was over the fence, just missed it. Now watch him once he realizes he doesn't have the ball. Pretty good right hand. He came close. A whisper. Go to six to five Angels. And Bobby Gritch is coming up to bat for Rob Wilpon. So Bud Black is stung. Willie Wilson is hot out there in center. And by the way, in looking ahead for the Royals, they have Biancolana, Wilson, and Smith. And if anybody gets on, Rudy Law. Gritch fighting a slump. That's why he was sitting this one out. He was 0 for 17. Uh, one hopper knocked down by Brett. He can't make a play. really chases this one as short hop he can't come up with it and he thinks he may still have a play ball was hard hit he really chases it hard and it'll be error five and that would be the third error charge of the Royals today so the home run by DeSensei now that hard hit ball by Gritch and Gary Blaylock out there to talk to Bud Black Dick Schofield and Bob Boone are the next two hitters. I'll tell you, I had to get my eraser out. I thought that was a base hit. That ball was that ball was hit pretty hard. So as Cole begins to loosen up, Dave Cohn down in the bullpen. Dick Schofield climbs in to hit, struck out twice and flied to center all three at bats against Dennis Leonard. So Leonard and Sutton and Forster have nothing to do with this. The pitchers of record are Corbett and Black. A stormy afternoon in Anaheim. With nobody out, Brett has to shorten up at third. trying very hard to tie up Gritch in the event they do try to sacrifice. He doesn't have much of a lead. He's only about two steps off the bag. One ball and no strikes. In checking previous performances up until today, Schofield has not sacrificed this year. So as he looks at most dubbing at third, if he is being asked to sacrifice, it'll be for the first time this year. He's not sure of the signs, so he's going to go down and check them. He's hitting less than 100 against Bud Black. So he wants a double check. So it is six 
65 Angels. Bottom of the eighth inning, nobody out. Bobby Gritch at first, and Schofield, Boone, and Pettis do up. It's hardly worth throwing over there as far as driving him back because he has such a short lead. in the way but he can be more than all four or five feet off the bag at the most and there's the bunt in the air fielded by black they get one and the bad throw goes into the dugout so they had a shot at two Schofield almost popped it into a double play and what it really turns out to be a break for the Angels they not only get a man over to second base but they get a much better runner Schofield is knocked back with the bunt. Now he just stands there. Look at him. He's way out of the box. And now the play's at second base. They got a lot of time. For some reason, Bianclana rushed it and threw it past Balboni. So Bianclana throws it away. That is the fourth error charged to the Royals. It is Bianclana's second. And you have a speedier runner because of the event with Schofield at second, one out. And Bob Boone, the hitter, followed by Gary Pettis. And he hits a one-hopper at Frank White, and Schofield holds. Schofield, with White eyeballing him, knew that if he tried to cross over, White had the chance to throw over to Brett, so he stayed there. Two down, but of course, if you don't throw the, the bot away, that's a perfect double play ball. So the Angels are getting additional swings, and Gary Pettis is the hitter, and we'll see just how important that is. Gene Mork wants that additional run. It's six to five Angels in the eighth. To repeat, Bianca Lana, Wilson, and Smith are due up for Kansas City. That's right. Pettis hit into a double play, hit back to the box and grounded out. All three at-bats, however, were against Dennis Leonard. Leonard was brilliant, struck out 10 after a very wobbly beginning. And a hit batter and an argument, etc., and he was gone in the seventh. Don Sutton went six and a third, and after a wobbly beginning, he settled down. And then a hit batter was the last man he faced, Lonnie Smith. Oh, that got Rich oh, Garcia. Rich Garcia already oh. took that one. That was a nasty crack. Mm. Got him on the inside of the leg. There's not much protection there. His position is oh, pretty wide open, too. Look at him where he's wide open. Mm. It went right straight down, left leg. He got a nasty crack. So timeout. Rich Garcia hobbling behind the plate. protection is on the top of the shoe it looked like he got hit on the side mm -hmm. come straight down he's all right but there's no protection on the side he's gonna try to tough it out Marty may have to make a call here and get some of those guys off vacation <laughs> That's a nasty crack, man. I'm telling you, you can see that one hurt. I got compassion for the umpires. You don't see a catcher checking the ball when, when an umpire gets hit, like an umpire checking the ball when a catcher gets hit. <laughs> one and two, the count. Uh, Gary Pettis waiting. Two and two. When you said that's a nasty crack, I was interpreting that either way. But we'll pause briefly for station identification. This is the NBC Television Network. This is WOC-TV in Davenport, your station for the best in sports. He was walking off the field, but it is a ball. And the... Oh, what a pitch. Watch this. 
started to walk away. All right, three and two the count. Six to five Angels in the eighth. get there regrip and he still had plenty of time to get McRae the executive producer of NBC Sports Michael Weissman the coordinating producer for NBC Baseball Harry Coyle the telecast of today's game of the week produced by George Finkel directed by Bucky Guntz free game produced by Les Dennis free game directed by Mary Buda Lamusio and technical directors Ray Figelski and Sal Nagita well here's Willie Lied to center, popped a short, fouled out, walked and scored a run. Foul back, one and one. Wilson against Corbett has never done very much. He has one hit in ten previous at-bats against him. And on deck, Lonnie Smith. but Gary Pettis is right there. Let's take a look at the frustration of Willie Wilson. Watch this. This was on the ball hit by DeSensei. So near and yet so far. Now the tumble, and now somehow you've got to let the rage out. And that sums it up for Kansas City with two out in the ninth and Lonnie Smith at the plate. 6-5 Angels. Lonnie doubled and homered, fly to center, and was hit by a pitch. And remember, he was out at the plate when he hesitated on the little roller up along first base by George Brett. Had he committed immediately, he would have scored. And that's just another part of the Kansas City frustration. in the ninth and the last one is best play of the day to short hop after lunging and then throwing Lonnie Smith out by plenty and the Angels six runs eight hits no errors the Royals five runs eight hits and four errors the winning pitcher would be Doug Corbett and the losing pitcher would be Bud Black and this week's NBC Miller Lite player of the game is Doug DeSensei. Miller Lite happy to present a check for a thousand dollars in the name of Doug DeSensei to the National Multiple Sclerosis Society. 40,005 came out to see a dandy and the big problem the rhubarbs all started because of only three umpires. We'll be back. The Major League Baseball Game of the Week has been brought to you by Ford and your local Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? By Miller High Life. Miller made the American way since 1855. By Kentucky Fried Chicken. We do chicken right. And by Radio Shack, the computer experts, a division of the Tandy Corporation. We'll be back at Anaheim with some interviews right after this. Five home runs and six pitchers. We'll meet Joe and the three umpires, and we'll be back after these messages from your local station. Hi, 
I'm standing with the three umpires. If you were with us all afternoon, uh, we practically made you guys the featured attraction. Richie Garcia was behind the plate. Doug Ford, Greg Kosk were all over the field. Let me begin with you, Richie. First of all, an injury report. We have seven umpires on the injury list now, according to Marty Springstead, your uh, supervisor. How about the ankle where you got hit? Uh, it'll be all right. I just, you know, it's probably going to swell up a little bit. I'll ice it down, and uh, I'll be all right. I'll be out here tomorrow. What no did problem. Dick Hauser say? What was the magic word? Well, he just said he had to go. He had to go on this play. You know, he'd been out two times before. Uh, you know, he just said, uh, you're going to have to run me on this one. And I said, all right, fine, then I'll run you. But it looked like he had backed off and it kind of cooled off, and you went right at him again, almost like you were baiting him. No, I, I, went, at him, I went at him again because he, he said that I, that I had told him that the ball hit, hit uh, Jones in the knee, and I couldn't figure out, you know, where he heard that. I never said that. I never said that Rupert Jones got hit in the knee. What I told him was that I saw shoot, uh, a dent in uh, Rupert Jones's foot on his shoe, and then I looked the ball. I checked the ball. The ball had red shoe polish on it. I showed him the ball. I showed Quirk the ball. Mm -hmm. He said I never showed him the ball. And if you look at the films, you, you see that I did show him the ball. And he claims that he ne that he never saw the ball. And uh, you know, well. Then he said something about the knee. That's when I came back. When he said something about the knee is when I came back because I, I had not said that. Uh-huh. And then he said the magic word to launch him. Then after that, he said, uh, you're going to you're gonna have to throw me on this one. And I said, well, fine. Then I'll just oblige you, and you're going. He said. I got a play at second base for you, and I got a play Willie Wilson made. But right now, I got a play for Vince Scully up in the booth. Well, you talk about dangling a participle. I guess that's the best way to finish today. Leave it right there in midstream. For Joe Garagiola, Vin Scully sending it now to Bill McAtee in New York. All right, Vin, let's get you updated on baseball this afternoon. We will begin in Boston, and the Red Sox continue to have trouble with the Brewers. Milwaukee led it 1 to nothing until the 7th. And then Jim Gantner hits this single that drives home Dale Swain. The Brewers led it at that point 2 0, and that lead stood up. Boston did threaten in the ninth, and it took a great catch by Rob Deere to end the Red Sox threat. Deere will make the running grab off the shot from Rich Gedman in right, and the Brewers beat Boston today 2 0. That opened the door for the Orioles and Yankees playing today in Baltimore, and it was a day of power for the Yankees. All of their runs produced as a result of home runs. Four to two Yankees. Two out in the first for Dave Winfield. Ricky Henderson on third after two stolen bases, and Winfield takes the pitch from Scott McGregor over the wall, and the Yankees led it two nothing. The Orioles tied it up with two in the bottom of the first, and then in the seventh, Ricky Henderson with his tenth home run of the year, hitting the screen on the foul pole. That broke the tie. The Yankees win four to two. The rest of the American League this afternoon. Texas leading the American League West right now, trailing Oakland three to nothing in the top of the seventh. Minnesota over Cleveland nine to three. The Twins stop the Indians' winning streak at five. Toronto over Detroit. The Blue Jays win it with three in the ninth. Cliff Johnson had a three-run home run, and Buck Martinez won it with his first home run of the year. In the National League, the Mets continue to win four straight now, and ten of their last thirteen. They beat the Pirates with a five-run fifth inning, and the inning included a bizarre play as Tony Pena gets Wally Backman trapped off first. He looks Lynn Dykstra back at third, and then watch. After Pena fires the second, Dykstra breaks home and scores ahead of the tag. Part of the five-run inning. Sid Fernandez went the distance today. The first time this year he's thrown a complete game. He gets Mike Brown to pop up to Wally Backman to end it. Fernandez goes to 7-2, and two, and the Mets roll today 5-1. to one. At Wrigley Field, Gene Michael was ejected in his first game as manager of the Cubs, and the Cubs were shut out by Ray Burris, 1-0. Tommy Hur's home run in the second stood up, and in Atlanta, the Reds came from behind to beat the Braves 2-1. Third round of the U.S. Open is now history. Going into the final round tomorrow, Australian Greg Norman will have a one-shot lead over Lee Trevino and Hal Sutton. Norman had a tough time on the 13th hole where he had a double bogey. Sutton today tied the course record with a 4-under par 66. That gets you caught up we thank you very much for being with us today.